All right, so I thought I would carry on from uh, one of the comments I made yesterday when I was talking about um, Messian's prolific use of descriptive titles and uh, how I've gone back and forth in my, you know, in my lifetime on, on the value of a title that is uh, deliberately descriptive. And I think the first thing to point out is that every title is deliberately descriptive. And I think realizing that helped clarify my thinking on the importance or the utility of a title to a piece of music. So even something that seems kind of abstract um, implies a lot or describes a lot. Sonata number 23 implies an awful lot about structure and probably a little bit about the way the material of the piece is going to be uh, developed or, or manipulated or treated. It gives the audience, it gives the hearer, the listener, um, a point of view right at the onset. I, even a piece called Untitled, Untitled for solo piano, gives you um, an access point that this piece is um, perhaps going to uh, move into an open frame of mind, an open space of, 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 of some kind. Um, so a piece like what I'm working on right now, it's a piano sonata, uh, and, and I want to use uh, a title that is evocative and poetic. And I want to understand why I want to, want to do that. Most of the music I've written lately um, at least for piano, has been uh, dated. So, I'll, you know, I'll say like three pieces for piano, February 2022, piece one, two, and three. Uh, almost like an opus, opus number. My electronic music, uh, for example, if I were to dig up here on my, uh, on my um, Zen Guap, on my Bandcamp site. Here we go. Um, these titles here. Um, At sufficient distance, she is starlight, she is dust, glory birds, orange gold, hands made perfect to keep us shot. These are ti These are titles. You should go listen to all of these, by the way, because they are all... This witch is a robot under the tree. Um, these are all very evocative, and and I some of these I actually used a random poetry generator to come up with uh, the title, uh, and then maybe wrote the piece after doing that. And then a lot of these pictures are snapshots that I took on my phone from around around the house. Um, this is in this one here is in Pittsburgh, right by the my house. I think uh, this is at the bus stop right outside my house. Um, this is downtown Pittsburgh. So um, in my electronic music, I've always valued a, an evocative title and a nice and a nice picture because I think of them as um, albums, as units that are then being given. And uh, here's kind of where I, I, I land on this. The, the title in a uh, classical piece of music it's like part of the score. It is, right? It's different from a from these electronic music where there is no score. There's just the artifact. Um, and why not give it a title? Um, in the in a piano sonata, uh, within that piano sonata, the composer will put expression marks for the performer to consider as part of the interpretation. And you know, with some composers, you get the feeling that those Expression marks are very, very important, uh, very didactic, very specific, very precise. And in others like me, where there's maybe an element of laziness, that's expression markings are more general, more direction. But but they're still there to be considered. Uh, they can be rejected. You can have a performer who uh, uh, interprets those expression marks to an extreme or 
decides to take advantage of the fact that some of them are minimal to apply a lot. So the title is like an expression mark for the audience. It's an expression mark for the listener. Uh, if you're performing a score and it says Adagio molto cantabile con espressione um, uh, e sentimentale, or something like that, something like that, you're going to play in a certain a certain way. Unless you're a little bit perverse or you have a really strong idea about doing it a little bit differently, uh, then maybe uh, the expression marks are there to be dis dis disregarded. So, a piano sonata that I where I want the big piece, the big I want a big first movement, uh, a second movement that's uh, quieter, shorter, and more free flowing meditation, and then a third movement that's uh, variations variations on a theme that I'm using in an opera that I'm writing. So that gives you some context. If I call it third movement, movement three, variations on a theme from Love, Love, Bing, Bing, an opera for three dogs, two humans, and one satellite. That gives you some context. It gives you a little bit of depth. Uh, kind of like how um, when Tolkien references one line from a poem, and then come to find out that he's written a thousand lines on Baron and Luthien. Um, the leaves were long, the grass was green, and hemlock umbles tall and fair. Uh, hang on, hey! Those dogs are chewing something up. So, uh, a big movement at the start that has a real theme, and I'm really thinking of it as. Uh, two themes with a bit of development, maybe maybe a bit more tripartite in terms of, I mean, the theme is stated three times, the second theme is three times, the development is tripartite. It, it's a bit more modular than, say, a Brahms development, but still a, uh, the idea of a sonata form is, is in there. And here I'm going to call it, um, on considering the, the North American glaciation around Ithaca, New York the North American glaciation around Ithaca, New York. And that's in part because when I was first came up with the theme, and we'll look at the theme later in, in the week, because it really is a, a theme. Uh, we were in the Finger Lakes, my family and I, for a, 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 a 10 day vacation in the spring. And it was, it was wonderful and beautiful. And that landscape is really rich and resonant. And uh, I don't think it's cheating to bring that rich, resonant landscape into the way I want you to hear the music. Um, I want you to consider the music as a rich and resonant piece and referencing a landscape that is obviously rich and resonant to me, uh, makes that e easier, um, easier for you to participate in and harder for you to ignore. It's unlikely that you're going to see a piece with that title and think that it is a frippery. For example, a lot of the music that I wrote over the pandemic were short preludes uh, that were more or less on the frippery scale of things, whereas this piece is more or less on the serious and intense side of things. So, um, so I had the title and then um, I thought that I would um, experiment with uh, the latest craze for AI images. Right, so instead of using little snapshots, what if I wanted some images that were, uh, you can see how these are similar to those pictures that I took, particularly if I were to take a detail, right? And I've got about a dozen that we're gonna flip through here. I went into Dream Studio, the um, AI image, and typed in uh, North American glaciation. These are in the style of Edward Hopper. Uh, now this, I, this is really quite beautiful, I think. And this one in particular, I'm, I'm really struck by that. You know, North American glaciation, you have this sense of, of, of geologic time, not human time, geologic time. The same way that Messian has that element of time when he talks about uh, the, the cross or the, or the bells of, of no, the Noel. 
Um, this is, look at that. I find that's extraordinary. Uh, then I said, okay, show me North American glaciation around Ithaca, New York in the style of Kandinsky. Some of these are more or less effective. Um, that's very Kandinsky, it's this one here. A bit too busy. And like that. You can see there's sort of a map-like element to it. Okay. And then I said uh, in the style of Matisse, this one I, I find quite, quite effective. Not so much this one. This one, I, I really, you know, top five out of the 15 or so that I've got. There's just something about it that gets across that sense of, of, of time. Um, this one, not so effective, although an interesting sense of the glaciers. Here in Pittsburgh, where, where I live, just 20 miles north of here, maybe 40 miles north of here, uh, is the uh, southernmost point of the North American glaciers that formed the Finger Lakes, right? And as they uh, retreated, the, the state park is called Moraine State Park, and a moraine is the end point of a glacier. So there's actually a point not far from here, uh, maybe a two-day walk or, you know, or a 20-minute drive that you can stand on. Say, this is as far south that you shall not pass. Uh, this is quite a lovely one. Then I switched, I said Pizarro. No, these are the painters that I'm particularly fond of. These are not as... I, I like these, but they're not as suitable for what I'm looking for. Although this one is quite, quite wonderful. I'd print some of these out and put them on my... Well, okay, then I... And some Kiefer, the German, whatever you would call him. Do you know Kate Kiefer? Uh, the last time I read about him, he was uh, working on an old farm in a forest in, in in Bohemia somewhere and was turning it into caves and buildings that were themselves the works of art. Uh, there used to be a painting of his in the permanent display here at, in the Pittsburgh Museum. It's not there anymore. But these are quite, this are the Great Lakes. So the Finger Lakes are actually up sort of in uh, this southern area below the Great Lakes. Isn't that extraordinary? Look at these. Oh, and there are my dogs. And I took a picture of them. We bought this new walking bowl so that when I take them out for longer walks in the hot weather, I can uh, carry a little bowl of water. So. Um, titles are important and there's no such thing as a, as a no titled piece there's no such thing as a title that doesn't mean anything I used to write pieces of music called Transmission One thinking that I was being very sort of alien and dis, dis, distinct and discreet and detached and I wasn't at all I was simply playing into a different um, descriptive title so let me know what you think. If you write pieces, how much time do you put in the title? In some ways, I may not start with the title, um, but I often start with a with a feeling rather than a musical idea. And uh, putting some words to it gives me a reference point. So I certainly had that title. I'm nowhere near done with this sonata. I may be halfway through a, a reasonable first draft of that first movement. So it's starting to take shape, but there's still a ton of work left to do on it. But I know that's the title. Um, so let me know in the in the comments if you have a title that you're particularly fond of, or if you have a way of thinking about the title. Do you start with a title? Do you write the piece and end with it? For me, it really does summarize the gesture of the piece. So, anyway, keep your wits about you. More soon. <laughs>